Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Roots of Success podcast. I am your host, Nate the Great, and today we have a very, very special guest, the one and only, okay, Janelle Marie. How you doing? Hey, how's it going? It's funny how you're like, Nate the Great, and I'm like, the Janelle Marie. <laughs> We like we really hype ourselves up there, right? <laughs> right? We need the, the the in our names. Yeah, of course, it's very important, guys. You should try it. It makes you feel good. Absolutely. And for those of you who might be wondering, you know, who is Janelle Marie? Like, give me a little <laughs> bit of a of a briefing on her. So basically, uh, Janelle, she's originally from South Florida. Yep. She's been in the uh, in the entertainment industry from an early age, and she studied journalism at CSUN. And since graduation. Uh, has not stopped working. Previously, she uh, was on the Disney Channel, Movie Surfer, uh, the Monster Jam, and now ESPN. And she's also acted on <laughs> NCIS LA and The Last Ship. So you have a lot of creden- uh, credentials, Janelle. So I get that. Uh, I get yeah. For that. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. I know. Like my jobs are really random. Everyone looks at my resume and they're like, "What? How did you go from here to there to there?" Mm. And like that's like not even including other work that I did in between because I, as a journalist and reporter host, it's very freelance based and also with acting too, it's very, you don't know when your next job is. So you take a lot of random jobs too. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) absolutely. I can imagine. So kind of, kind of break it down. You know, I'm always curious on how somebody, you know, starts out in terms of where they come from, how they got to where they're at, you know, of course the roots to their success. So Kind of talk a little bit about your childhood growing up and, you know, how you guys, where you're at. Are you guys ready for this long story? Let's I promise it it's not a snooze fest. <laughs> it's actually pretty interesting. Um, so, I mean, I grew up in Miami, Florida, and it really all started for my mom and my, like, my mom and my grandma. They were approached. I was only, like, 18 months old, and they asked me, like, they asked them to put me, like, in this, like, crawling competition. I know that sounds crazy and, like, but normal, but it, it was, like, a televised crawling competition. So I ended up winning that, and then that kind of, like, fast forward into me doing beauty pageants and stuff like that. Um, and I started traveling all over like the United States. Like my, I think my first like print job was like at 18 months. So like literally I've been working since birth. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, I got my stuff from beauty pageants, but, and it has like such a bad rep because of like toddlers and tiaras. But back then, like there, there were their crazy moms, but luckily I like my mom was crazy, but not that crazy. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. No, like it was something like I cherish and like, I wouldn't see. Like, I kind of see how I got into where I am now without doing pageants. And on the ca- on the contrary, I have, like, two of my best friends to this day I made from pageants. Like, it wasn't very catty at all. Um, I only did tell us about, like, eight or nine because it is a very expensive uh, journey. Um, you know, if you think about, like, all the stuff girls go through dresses and photography and this and that. Yeah. But it gives you, like, stage presence. It... it it teaches you a lot of things like working with other girls. Like you actually have to be nice, you know what I mean? And, and interviewing skills because you don't realize that at a young age, you're going up to a like judge, like like it's a panel of judges. There you go. Um, and they ask you questions and you have to like, you know, prepare an answer. Um, so started off there. And then um, in Miami, Florida, there was this like dance studio called MDA, yeah. but it taught you um, like they did dance a little bit of like acting like improv. Um, but they had like this almost like a partnership with uh, a news, uh, a network in Miami. Uh, it was Univision. And I'm sure like all my Latinos would know if they ain't got any Latino audience mm-hmm. members. Oh no. Uh, Univision. And then a show called Salvo Gigante. So, I was chosen to be a part of like their kids, um, kind of like I'm thinking in Spanish now, like elenco, which is kind of like a it's a group of kids basically that they would um, put us in like to dance behind either like artists or they would do sketches. It's kind of like you know because um, the show Saulo Gigante, uh, it's hosted by Don Francisco, which he was like on the air for over like fifty years, and it was kind of like your set, like like a Saturday Night Live but in okay. Spanish. Okay. But yeah, so they would do like sketches with kids. You know, we would do like adult stuff, um, and that's kind of like I feel like not my first hosting job because after that they put me in like a kids panel 
to do to be the judge. We would like judge kids that would come and do like a talent show. And we would give them prizes by giving them candy. I was like, you get three candies today. Because, like, I felt like you did good. And I would give my perspective. Mm-hmm. And then that just, like, opened up doors for me doing commercial work and print and print work. Um, I'm a brunette now. But as a kid, I was actually blonde. I had blonde curly really? hair. Yeah, it's, like, wow. it's naturally blonde. Um, I'm Cuban Honduran. So we actually have a lot of European descent on the Cuban side, like a lot of Spaniards and stuff like that. I haven't done my 23 and me yet, but I'm sure I have a mix of a bunch of stuff. Um, but that just kind of, uh, led to a bunch growing up. I did a lot as you can tell, uh, got into the dance world. I, comp- I danced competitively, um, did ballroom dancing. I did horseback riding, uh, yeah, a little. I did had a little equestrian in me and so until they took me out. Like that was the thing. Is like I anything I did, I wanted to do it one hundred and ten percent. It wasn't like your normal kid that you would put him like on soccer. It was like no, I'm gonna make it to like FIFA. Then like that was my perspective at a very early age. So like my mom put me in horseback riding classes. I wanted to compete. I would do gymnastics summer camp. I wanted to compete. Like I was very yeah. competitive and I always wanted to yeah. excel. But so that was like all kind of sporadic. But Dance is mainly what I I, w- I would do, and uh, a lot of commercial work. I never got into theater, uh, considering I did do like um, I'll never forget. It was like a Christmas play. It was like <laughs> Scrumpy's Winter Wonderland or something <laughs> like that. Um, so did that, but I never ended up doing like musical theater or anything like that. I would participate in school plays, but I never went beyond that. And um, fast forward, um, I dance in the heat. When I was young, when I was in middle school, I was a Miami Heat dancer, but we were called Junior Jammers. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, and then I've always worked my entire life. Yeah. Uh, and then got the opportunity around 15, 16 to uh, come out to LA. Um, at the time, it was for music. Um, and it, well, actually, there was like music and a Hannah Montana audition. Okay. And not to be like the like Hannah Montana, it was like a guest star audition. We had um, childhood friends that um, ended up moving out here, and his dad. Like I always, I give him some love too because I've always wanted to come out to LA since like age eight. If we backtrack my story, at age eight, I was flown to LA for a Tylenol commercial, and that's when I knew, I knew already that I wanted to come here. Okay. But who's going to listen to an eight-year-old? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm almost yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, she supported me and everything, but not at that point to, like, move your entire family oh, to California. Yeah. yeah, so the when the opportunity arose as a, in high school, 15, 16, like, of course we went. And it ended up being really good. Like, I didn't book the Hannah Montana job, but I got a call back, which is, like, a big deal Excuse. when it's, like, you're – first time out here you Absolutely, don't know yeah. um and then that just led to a meeting with this producer called andrew lane okay. which he's like worked on high school musical he had worked with a couple other artists and they like threw me in a girl group of course <laughs> but you know it, it ended up not working out but i was with them for almost a year and i give thanks to him because uh you know he would fly me out to be a part of this group and i learned about songwriting i learned a lot of different things and being here obviously i got to know about LA and how things are run here um but education was always a big priority in my family so and I was I went to an all-girl Catholic high school so they were as much as they allowed me to do stuff um and and go out and do very like entertainment industry things I obviously had like there's hours and requirements that need to be fulfilled and I was a nerd I still am very much a nerd. It's my air freshener that went off. (laughs) Yeah, sorry. Um, But I always, like, before I even left to L.A., like, during that junior year, because I missed, like, three months of school, I I scheduled myself, like, meetings with all my teachers, asked if I can, like, do any work now, any tests, like, beforehand, because I was willing to prepare to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, just be prepared. And I asked them to, I'm like, if there's tests that are – going to be done when I'm gone I'm willing to seek a moderator like have someone that would watch me take the test in LA you know what I mean like I was very much like I wasn't like about to like cheat online and, and do it I was very like respect- yeah I, I um I really cared about it so it ended up working out but ultimately like there was no way I was going to be able to graduate high school uh if I stayed out here by doing that so 
there are two options that I could have done. I could have taken chess B, which I did take it just in case it's back up, which if you don't know what a chess B is, it's kind of like your high school, it's kind of like a GED almost, okay. but they, a lot of, um, kids in the industry end up doing that so they can work more hours. They can work as an adult mm. in the industry. Cause in the film industry, if you haven't, you know, if you're still in school, sets have to like take additional breaks, breaks so that um, kids in LA can uh, go to school. Interesting. Yeah. They don't have that law in LA. I mean, in Miami, they have that law in LA. They have stronger, obviously entertainment laws in California. So I did that, but then ended up going to Miami. I graduated high school. So I'm an alumni from Ola. It's called Our Lady of Lords Academy. Okay. But at 18, I knew like with or without my mom, I was coming to LA. Mom came, guys. <laughs> <laughs> mom came. My brother came, and I ended up going to school here too because um, it was a promise that I made to my grandma. She was like, "Yeah, uh, you can go to LA, but you need to study and get your diploma mm-hmm. and your degree." So. Did that, studied uh, at Cal State Northridge, CSUN. I got my degree in journalism and a minor degree in Spanish language journalism. That was not my first pick. Um, I, I was going to be a bio major. Oh I was goodness. fascinated with medicine. Wow. Tell you, nerd up in here, like <laughs> you nerd. About yeah. Um, but it, journalism ended up making sense because I had already been on camera my whole life, you know, I, and I love to write. I was. For me, it's another way of storytelling. Um, like other fun fact that I left out, like at around like age seven through ten, I used to be in this show called El Chole Lucky, which was it's called Lucky the Clown. It was like a it's kind of like Barney, but for like Miami locals. That's how I put it, right, right. you know. And uh, and that was like my first like reporting job. I swear because I was like the reporter of the show, and I would go to local businesses and like interview them. Like that was like my duty. But yeah, so I did that, and then. God, I always I worked throughout college. Strongly recommend it. Um, but I did like brand ambassador work. I would like I worked for Quest Nutrition, Sparkling Ice Water, Evolve. Evolve is under like Muscle Milk. Yeah. So I was like, I'm that girl that was like at events that gives you like free stuff and like oh, tell yeah. you about the projects, yeah, you know, like the product. And uh, so I did that. And then um, as I did college, um, and I was still auditioning for acting, but it's definitely hard. And, like, you don't realize how much you got to put into your craft. I'm, like, rambling. I have a really long story. So, no, please no, good, feel yeah. free to interrupt at any point. Um, but, yeah. And then after I graduated my um, university, actually, my first internship that I ever did, that's another pro tip for people listening. Get your internships early. Mm-hmm. Don't listen to what college tells you. They always say, like, wait till junior, senior year. No. If you can, do it freshman year. Right. It doesn't, I know some companies won't even take you. But, like, try going for, like, a smaller company that is doing it and get that experience in because it stands out. It helps you. Um, but yeah, I wasn't able to get an internship till the last semester of my senior year and ended up getting uh-huh. two. Uh, one for publicity at Stars and then one at Univision 34. So, it's yeah. like, Univision obviously means a lot to me because, you know, I was, them, I was with that net company as a kid and then yeah, ended up, you know, as an adult, too, going going back and then... Uh, I give thanks to that news director because he always believed in me. And as an intern, he gave me my first story. So I hadn't even, I had just graduated college and I got, I was on the air at uh, 6 p.m. news, like during sweeps, which is kind of like a really critical time for the network. But most news companies don't take risks on young millennials. More and more, they are doing it now more. But even then, like when you're watching the news, like KBC, anything like that, you don't ever see like fresh out of college, right? Yeah. You don't see um, a bunch of whiteheads on the. Yeah, yeah. you know, you, you got usually like older people, which yeah. never I would never discredit them. They all have come with experience and and all this stuff, but um, it's rare that a news director will give you a chance in the city of Los Angeles, which is like a number one, number two location. Um, uh, every state and county has like a, a ranking, okay. so that's why you find like a lot of people have to move away to get their start as a reporter. That to go to smaller oh. towns and stuff like that because. Um, it's just kind of, it's not easier, but it's easier to get a job. So mm-hmm. you go away to build your resume and then come back to your hometown if you want to, or like any major city. Yeah. Uh, luckily for me, I did not have to do that, you know, but I did have years of experience. I mean, years of experience under my belt in regards of like being comfortable with the camera and like kind of mm-hmm. knowing like, I, yeah, you know, I had like a, like a lot of perks, you know, and then, um, in that regard to so, like, 
experience, even though it wasn't real experience. And to this day, I'm still learning every day, you yeah, know? Absolutely. Um, yeah, and then that turned into like all the other jobs, but I don't know if you want me to go through all the other ones too. Yeah, for sure. Now, I'll tell you what, let's, because you said something that was key there, Janelle, was the yeah. being comfortable in front of the camera. Because mm-hmm. you've been in the front of the camera ever since you've been like a little peewee. Right? Yeah, literally 18 months. Right. That was like the first time I've been on that's, the camera. Like that's front of the camera. So with you being in front of the camera at such a young age, yeah. was it intimidating or did you just kind of like adapt into it? No, honestly, I always ask myself, I don't know what happened. I think it was middle school. Cause you know, middle school is when all the bullying starts and like, I was fear, like fearless as a child. Mm. I Seems thought, like it, yeah. yeah, I had yeah. no fear of the camera. I was definitely like that annoying kid that would like do performances at the house <laughs> and like, not even I, like, look at me, look at me. It was, it was just like, I wanted to like entertain and make people happy and make people feel something and just always go like above and beyond. And then. Yeah, it was a transition. I went to public school, then I went to a private school in, in middle school, and yeah, that was it. Was definitely different because kids in school don't know like all about this life. So I thought it was like really cool for me, and like kids in middle school were like they would taunt me, like would bully me. I'm like, wah, you know, like it kind of kills it for you because then you pull back. I definitely pulled back. I I wasn't doing anything in the industry during uh, middle school. I'd only do my dance competitions, and then. Um, yeah, and then go to school because you kind of, it was like they kind of dimmed my light in a way, like uh, students and even some like teachers too. Because I had, I remember I had like one dance teacher that uh, at that school they would, they made the girls take like dance and arts. Okay. Or, um, was and it so, mandatory? Uh, yeah, it was, a, wow. it was like mandatory. But we had PE, but then they also like required us to do like uh, dance, like everyone did, which it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, dance does teach a lot of different things um and i remember i'd do like a triple turn like turning was always my thing okay. and she'd be like i said double and like when you have teachers like that that like restrict you like and instead of letting you like grow and blossom it it kills you you know what i mean like they should always let your kid like evolve and do that understanding respect obviously yes okay if you said to do one thing do that but that wasn't the case i wasn't disrespecting i just you know i was growing my ability right you know, so, um, but yeah, I would I would say then that's why around 15, 16, it was like kind of rediscovered because I kind of had put that whole thing on pause. I had my first little boyfriend at 13. Good. Yeah. Good. It lasted till I was 17. It, it lasted until my whole like LA. Respect, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I really thought I was like uh, married already. You know what I mean? You know, when you're young. Yeah, you do. You think that I probably would have been married. Okay. If I would have stayed in Miami, maybe. Um, but because it would have been a whole different lifestyle, like living in Miami. Oh my it's goodness. a different, uh, I'm sure like people back at home too, for you too, there, there's a different course of life. You know, you get your job, you have your girl, like if you do college, good. If you don't, like you follow your family business, uh, and then you settle down and start a family and you're just like 24, 25 years old. And it's like, you're already there. Right. You know what I mean? Where you come to, uh, LA, which is like the land of the dreamers and people are still like not even thinking about a family over 30 Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so you find i mean it's also too it's all about how you were raised and what your priorities are etc etc i'm -hmm. not dogging on anyone no no absolutely no you're and you're spot on with that because like i'm from a small town in pennsylvania and literally you see amish and mennonites just like (laughs) on the horses yeah yeah so whenever you mention about horseback i'm thinking Oh, yeah, I know exactly. What you mean, you know? But uh, that's the thing. Like, you know, you graduate, you go to college, you get a job. That's, yeah. that's what it was all about. That's it. But then I realized as well, I didn't necessarily get like, you know, straight up bullied, bullied. I just had like a lot of doubters. Yeah. Because I was reading like self help books at 15, 16 years old. Yeah. And a lot of people were just like, like why are you reading that? Mm-hmm. He's trying to scam you, the author, all this other stuff. And they just, they didn't get it. Yeah. You know, and, and the fact that they didn't get it, I realized that I was already an outlier from a from an early age. Yeah. And coming out here, I mean, those people like, yo, Nate, why'd you come out here? I'm like, not for business, but for personal growth. Yeah. Because if, I mean, you got to surround yourself around people that are on a completely different wavelength. You yeah. You can't be doing stuff with people that are kind of below you. Because you know this saying, you know, it's like uh, you hang out with five people that are like negative, you're going to be the sixth. Yeah. 
right? That's true. It's all about who you surround yourself. I mean, and that was part of the reason why I got out of LA too. I love Miami. I love my city. Everyone that I meet that uh, that are here, they're like, why would you leave? But yeah. believe it or not, I mean, I have no doubt in my mind that if I were to move home, I wouldn't have a job and a mm-hmm. good job in the industry like in as a host and as a reporter and whatever i have no doubt in my mind and that's not me being cocky it's just me like having the experience at a different level you know what i mean um and like i was and i'm i'm literally that girl that you tell me like hey i need you to pass out flyers for 20 bucks an hour i will do it like i've done those jobs to this day i still do to this day like to last year okay my first normal job before I came out to LA, like my life hasn't always been that glamorous. I was a clown at birthday parties. Okay. It's called hustling. And you do what you gotta do. You know, my mom has a party rental, so I was literally JJ the clown. Yes, it's really like it's embarrassing, but it's not because I was 16, 17 years old, going to these birthday parties, playing with kids for an hour, doing face painting, but I was making a lot of money. I was like it was like seventy five bucks an hour. Or something like that, you know, at 16 years old. So I paid my own car. Like, I had my own car payment, and I didn't care. Like, everyone could laugh at me, and I'm like, I'm driving an A5. Okay, I'm driving an A5 at 17 years old. So I set myself up to that level. Now, like, I probably could have saved a lot of money. You know what I mean? It's all about perspective. There's people probably like, oh, that's stupid. You could have bought a cheaper car and, like, saved. Yeah. But at the time, like, listen, like, uh, I'm thankful that I had my mom, too. Like, I did a, co- a McDonald's commercial at, like, age five, yes. and that paid for my college because yeah. my mom was smart and invested into what we called Florida prepaid college. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have to worry about that. Like, luckily for me, um, I graduated university, like, debt-free. Like, I all my stuff was paid for. So um, I was lucky that I was able to do that and invest in my, in my future. I mean, I got scholarships, too, um, which is why, you know, being good in school is important. Um, but I've always been, I've always worked for what I thought and like nothing's ever been given to me, I'd say. Mm. That's like, deep. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, I feel like sometimes people have a misperception of, you know, a lot of the people that are, you know, they've made it or, or making it. Yeah. It has been given to them. You yeah. Know, people like, think like, uh, for example, like uh, that I fact that I worked at ESPN is like, cause I have, a lot of followers and I quote unquote cause like your girl's not even at a hundred K. So it's like, no, it has nothing to do with that. Like I actually went to school for journalism. So that's four years, you know, like, cause sometimes, you know, you, people get, um, I can never shoot down someone that's gotten to where I'm at and not going to school, but sometimes it does hurt because like, man, I put myself through four years of education and for what, because you're just going to give it to someone who, use their body to get to the to their fame you know what i mean and i'm not saying that everyone does but it's like an example of situations that i've been in it's like you're not even um giving people that have struggled you know um taking multiple jobs to get a job but um but i'm sure other people and even in my industry like i'm so the rookie like small fish in a big pond at espn and it's not even something that Something I thought about, you know, I always thought about getting into sports, yeah. but I never thought in a million years that I'd be hosting a late night show Monday through yeah. Friday on that's ESPN cool. and ESPN Deportes, you yeah, know, that's you know, so it's like, so I'm super, super grateful, but I was just like, not, not the plan. So I know, of course, other people that are, that are looking, my mom keeps calling me, sorry. Um, <laughs> other people that are, that are looking at me that that was probably the number one goal from the star. They probably hate me, despise me, but you know. Just like life, kind of. You also go through. I don't know. I've I've just taken every every door that opens. I take it, kind of. Yeah. Like I don't need another job. I got another part time job on top of ESPN. But that's just how you elevate yourself. You know what I mean? And and going back to before me rambling. That's why I left Miami. It's just because like LA, there was different caliber work. You know, even in the film industry, oh they don't. You know, we don't film a lot in, in Miami um, now. It's like, damn, I'm like, I left Miami to go to LA. I should have gone to Atlanta because Atlanta's become the East Coast Ooh. Hollywood. So Absolutely. Right. Especially for music, you know? Yeah, too, for music. Like, people that are trying to, like, get up in the hip-hop industry. Yeah. Miami's great for music. If anyone's mm-hmm. trying to do reggaeton and, and Spanish music, <laughs> Miami's where you got to go. For real. Yeah. One thing about Miami, oh, you'll be... <laughs> have you'll you be been? sweating for days, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's humid, <laughs> it's AF. 
it's 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 a different it's a different city you know yeah it is it's yeah. it is obviously i'm gonna rep my city oh yeah i love my city like it's so it's so fun it's and so i get fun. really sad when people are like that's why i mean it sucks but it's like because you probably yeah. stay to the like in the tourist area For real. you know it, they'll get you in south beach with like overpriced drinks and everything but that's in general you know if you come to LA, there's gonna be overpriced drinks like mm. If you do those things, but uh, Miami's grown a lot as well as a city. They just developed a whole bunch of like different areas. Every time I go down, I'm like, oh my god, when did they open this? Like, yeah. you know, um, actually, this year is the longest ever since I've been out in LA that I have not gone home. The last time I was home was in January, and I used to go every like couple months. I just haven't had wow. the opportunity to with this new job. Just because, like this. Year. Yeah, it's just it's not worth it. I mean, it's worth it, but it's not worth it to just go. A Saturday, Sunday, come back Monday. I work Monday through Friday, you know, and it's like, oh, I'll take a day off. It's like, it's kind of limited, you know what I mean? Yeah, travel time in the air. And, yeah, it's five yeah. hours back home. Um, So I would do it if I take a red eye, like Friday, get there Saturday, enjoy. Um, I'm going to Florida soon, at least, in, in October to, to see my mom. So I just say the day off for something special. Like, um, I filmed an independent film earlier this year. I needed a couple of days off. Like, I save it for that. Save it for that, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And I'm the same exact way. I'm a big, big family guy. Yeah. Like people ask me all the time, like, Nate, what's your why? I'm like, family. Yeah. You know, like I do everything for my family. Uh, you hit on something very crucial, you know, and that's the hard work that you put in. Mm -hmm. The behind the scenes, the things that people don't necessarily see in the light. It's always typically in the dark. Yeah. There's a reason people wake up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. I mean, there's people work late. They're still working in the dark, you know? Yeah. It's whatever works best for, for the person. Yeah. So I'm curious with the hard work and then, of course, having good connections as well. I'm sure mm -hmm. that's crucial. How important has been having connections and getting connected with well-known people? How valuable has that been in your life to this day? Yeah. Um. Again, I'm, I moved to L.A. with not knowing a single soul. They used to rent an uh, inflatable bed. In the living room, I used to pay $75 a night just to be out here in the city. Like, no, I didn't come here. And it was like, hey, Janelle and Janet, that's my mom's name. Let's, can, you can crash my couch. I, unfortunately, I didn't have that luxury. I didn't have, like, people out here, um, resources. Over After, I started noticing, like, oh, my God, you're here, too. You're here, too. But it was a struggle. So I really did have to build those relationships on my own. And, yes, networking is important. Um, I can be, it's a bad habit. Don't do what I do. I'm hard headed, right? Like I sometimes like I can do it on my own. I don't need anybody, which is not true. You do need people. Um, there's, there are certain things in life where you do, let's like, you don't need anybody. Like you were, I was always told like you were born alone, you die alone. Um, so don't depend on other people to do things, but there's not a problem in networking. And I think that's, uh, being young in the city, it's like having the balance because, there's people that like, like, you go to events sometimes and it's just, oh, sorry, can we like pause just a second? Let me just text my mom, guys. Sorry, we're in the middle of a podcast. <laughs> Be right back. Sorry. I do have my uh, mama drill that loves and care about me. <laughs> um, anyways, um, you know, go to those events. If someone invites you to go to an event, go. You never know who you meet. Um, I actually had pulled away from doing that. Um, but I'm back now and I actually like, use my resources in my own company. They held something for like, um, Hispanic, uh, Hispanic heritage month. Um, and I met so many cool people in, um, my industry that they may not help me now, but maybe they, I can help them or vice versa in a few months from now. Um, and it does help because not knowing anyone, my brother, my mom and my brother moved out here in LA when I moved out. So my brother went to elementary school and I actually met someone really important. Her name's, uh, Maria Nava. And she was my my brother's best friend's mom, mm -hmm. who is a radio host. She's been on the air for over, God, maybe over 25 years Jeez. for uh, K-Love um, and a couple other stations. Uh, she's big on Univision. So she became like my journalism mentor because she saw the struggle. I didn't know anyone. My mom, like, no, I'm the first from my family to go to college. So I didn't have that help of like, hey, mom, can you call so-and-so like to help right. me, which we all know that. People do have that luxury. Again, not dogging them. I just didn't have that, you know? Um, so I couldn't call anyone over at NBC that can, like, refer me to an email address that I can send my resume to. But I had her. Um, ultimately, she would, 
she helped me, and so did at the time. I got my professor at CSUN. He's a reporter on UBCL. So with two people helping me, I finally, my senior year, got that, like, got my resume at least in the door. That did not guarantee me. I still had to do the interview process. It was just so connections are very, very important. So don't for, don't forget to do that. But I didn't have I didn't have that, um, and I'm still growing them now, you know. And it's all about that. It's like being grateful and paying it forward. You know, sometimes people will ask for stuff and it's like you can have that moment of like, like annoying, like no one, or like, or like no one helped me. Right. But you got to also think about like, shoot, mm. someone did like, you know, or like maybe that one person that helped you. I'm like, okay, let me pay it forward. Or like, even if no one helped you, like you should uh, pay, like pay it forward and, and give someone a hand. But it's like that balance too. Cause I don't like people that think that they can get everything served to them in a silver spoon. Because, yeah. like, it, it requires um, hard work. Like, everything else that I've done, like, on the journalism side, like, I got on my own. Like, I worked, like, okay, when you see on the internship, they helped me, but I still like, did that interview by myself, right? Yeah. Uh, Disney Movie Channel Surfers, I saw, well, my mom actually saw, like, the announcement for the audition. Oh, okay. And I went and, like, contacted, at the time I had a, well, I still have an agency, but I had an agency not for hosting, it was for acting. But... You know, I've made that phone call like, hey, guys, do you think I can go in for this? And then, you know, that expanded. I worked with TMZ very briefly okay. um, for like maybe like three or four months. That was through LinkedIn. LinkedIn. The power of LinkedIn. Yeah, they actually do look. And the recruiters do look at um, your account and your profile. So have everything up to date, too. Um, ESPN also is like the power of the Internet. That wasn't even through my agency did not get me that opportunity. It was um, a mix of things like where they saw my social profile. Um, they saw my demo reel up online and also like word of mouth. Um, I believe this is what I've understood from what people tell me that my name was thrown in a pile, like in a list uh, with people that they thought would be good for the job. Um, someone that was young, someone that was bilingual that has hosting experience and all that. So it isn't your your presence online is very very important so you could make stuff happen for yourself and not solely depend on uh on you know connections but connections do help when the time comes to make the decision um i never went into the greek life but i know i've heard that that helps too if you're in a part of fraternity mm. or sorority and yeah. you're there in an interview um and they have that connection it could help everything helps it's just like being open to it I'd say. I don't know. What do you think about that? No, oh, that's deep. Because that's the thing, like, especially when it comes to, you know, just connecting with other people. Um, I'm a firm believer that you can do anything with social media. Like, you can connect with anybody. Yeah, you hit me up through social yeah. media. Like, I don't care. If, <laughs> no, it's, it's true. You know, yeah. like, I don't care if somebody has 10 million, yeah. 20 million. I've had discussions with people that a lot of these Especially back home, people would be like, are you for real? Because I was just listening to his music yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, like you can do anything that you yeah. want, especially if your your profile, what you were saying, yeah. if it if it looks good. Yeah. You know, like you got to be up to date. You got to be up to par. Like some somebody like yourself, if with me hitting you up yeah. and if I had photos of, of me look with like a bunch of a beer and all that stuff, looking like a party or a frat dude. Yeah. Probably wouldn't have taken it seriously. Well, because I wouldn't know what your intention is. You know what I mean? Um, but that goes the same. Like, there are people that don't even, are not even in my industry and, like, want life advice. Um, and I look at all, almost all my DMs. I almost one or two. Um, and I take the time to respond because, which was, it started with my whole, like, um, I really got into, like, being a mental health advocate. Um, I do this thing called Check in Thursdays. I've been bad this month. But usually every Thursdays I post, like, a video. Um just kind of going over like topics or ways to like clear mind and stuff like that because it is very important and social media with all its perks and benefits also right. has a lot of downfalls because if you don't have someone to like help you curate your page or like you know maybe that person's just not a self-starter just yet mm -hmm. they can get easily intimidated like I don't even know where to start I don't want to start and like you get into your head right it's like I'm not pretty enough I'm not this I'm, you know all this dumb stuff that people see on Instagram and they don't think that they're capable of doing but you are capable of doing mm. <laughs> it's all about self love too it is it you is know? and it's uh, and it's all about men's, like mental strength like you can listen to a million Gary Vee podcasts <laughs> but if you don't act on what Gary Vee is telling yeah. you to do then you're not gonna do it 
it takes it's all about you you know what i mean yeah how many how many more podcasts are you gonna listen to how many more books are you gonna read and, yeah because that's the thing a lot of people are like well what's the secret to success but it's like there's not just it's like you have all of these different quote yeah. unquote secrets it's something that is gonna work for you might not work for me might not right. work for janelle mm -hmm. you know it's like there's it's it's whatever works for that person and how you can act on that your situation might be different i am from i am from a hood i yeah. i'm from like a middle class family yeah so my situation's a little bit different yeah i just i didn't have to you know fight to to find food like i was blessed to, to have food at the table right. growing up yeah. but and same for me too yeah. yeah like i mean it's like i was lucky enough to at least i had a good home life i had a mom and grandma that were there every freaking step of the way we may not have been the wealthiest but like they supported me and like put all their dollars towards like my career and my dream and whatever i wanted to do so that's like super important that you bring it up it's like everyone's journey is different but you can do it mm. it just may not be as easy but you'll get there you know i think life has ups and downs here some people that have really easy beginnings can have like really difficult middle parts or difficult endings you know how about that mm. and mindset? How mindset mind? Yeah, mindset's so key. I'm curious, you know, so I know over the years you've done a lot of interviews, mm -hmm. right, with, uh, you know, celebrities, influencers, the whole nine yards. What, like, what drives you in terms of just interviewing people? Um, because, of course, there's tons of people that do interviews and, you know, but what, what makes yourself different whenever you're talking to somebody like that? You um, know? God, I guess for me it's like, I've interviewed, like you said, a lot of people, a lot of different yeah. actors that most people would be like, you did, you know, <laughs> but I don't treat them like celebrities. I just treat them like my friend. Like it's just very conversational matter of fact. And I think that's like really important because if I really thought about like their power and who they were like, yeah, I'm sure nerves will creep in and you just cannot, cannot do that. You just have to treat them normally. And I don't know what, what drives me. I love I love to hear people's story. The same way, like, for you, you love to hear how people start up, right? Uh, and that's why I started this podcast. Same goes for me. Like, um, whenever I'm interviewing them about something, it's generally I generally care about knowing where their beginnings are or how they made this happen. Or how when I uh, worked for Monster Jam, it was really interesting because I had never seen a Monster Jam show <laughs> ever in my life. And if you guys don't know what Monster Jam is, it's basically like those monster truck competitions. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, um, I didn't know nothing, but they had like over 35 years of history of like the start of it. And you start interviewing the drivers and like asking them those questions. It's like, yeah, like my dad did this. So like, there's a lot of family in it. And that's the stuff that I love to get out and like have them express themselves. Um, because that's, and that's why I chose journalism because uh, of another form of storytelling, like as an actress, I want to tell the writer's story, right. you know, and this, I'm just like helping real people tell their story. You know, uh, like my the first thing I ever produced in college, it was a documentary on life after being in a gang. Because I genuinely like cared about that integration back into society. Um, because it's such a, it's very interesting for people that are in a gang and like all their stories, you know, like how do they even get there, right? And it's so many elements, like from socioeconomic status to uh, upbringing, home life. Um, so many different things and like when you do get out of that like how do you get back to what we call a normal society where you're not dependent on this gang that for many years it's like they treat it's like their family they don't see it as like yeah i'm in a gang it's like no these these are my brothers these are my sisters it's, it's a family so uh that was like the, i genuinely cared about that process and what were their resources you know i ended up going to homeboy industries and like interviewing the vp there and like they gave me access to couple of former members some of them chose to remain anonymous and i respected that but yeah that's kind of um it's just like genuinely caring about the story i know i don't get nervous at all the only time i got a little nervous and not even that i just kind of shook it off which is like the only not the only interview but like one of the interviews that i'm most proud of is i interviewed steven spielberg that wow. is like my biggest like career holy moly moment <laughs> yeah it's like a big one he's a big one i i would never know when i'd be in his presence again you know yeah. <laughs> hopefully on screen one day right i know he just did west side story mm. but uh uh but yeah that was like my that's my only bragging right if you guys allow me to don't troll me online <laughs>
Now she's got she's got plenty of other bragging rights too. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now I was curious about that because, like, even myself, you know, because whether you're extroverted, introvert, like, it's a label. Yeah. Right. I mean, personality tests or something I've been... I'm a combination. You're, you're, exactly. Yeah. Right? Same. And then if we're going by a test, I'm introverted. Yeah. Right? But I labeled myself that forever. Mm -hmm. But I realized I got many strengths by being introverted. And then, of course, you can be both. Yeah. So whenever you mentioned the whole nerves thing, that was very intriguing. Yeah. Because me, like, I operate off nerves. Mm -hmm. Like, every interview, like, every single interview I do... Um, interactions I come with, like the nerves are always there, right? Of course, they, they build on and on and on. But controlling them, I feel for me, has been huge because I, I played sports, soccer. I was a goalkeeper. Okay. Up. So I had so many penalty shootouts and they had to wave their yeah. arms and everything. I never lost one, I'll tell you that. Okay, okay. So I, uh, I was always like on, the, on my toes, like all the time. And I played that to my advantage, though, mm -hmm. because a lot of people are that they let nerves kind of hold them back. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous, I can't even do this. Yeah, you know, like I can't operate. But for me, I've kind of played that to my advantage, and I feel as if that's it's helped me a lot in terms of standing out just as a person. Yeah, because um, not a lot of people are willing to admit, like you know, what makes them nervous or what makes them click. Mm -hmm. and it's just it's intriguing whenever you mention that because I, I really get a kick out of just the nerves now you can actually play that to yourself yeah I mean with acting it's like something I still struggle to, to this mm. day because um, like with hosting maybe it's because it's more of a conversation on just me right but like yeah. with acting there's like so much more pressure because you've like prepared this character which should in essence be a little pieces of you you know to tell the story but just the environment is really different you know it's all these actors it's like a bunch of girls that look like you just like slightly hair is a little darker or a little lighter or whatever. We're all like, you know, 12 Latinas sitting in a waiting room in silence and everyone wanting to book this role because it could change your whole life. And I think that's like where the nerves come. It's like, this could change my entire life. Mm -hmm. So it's like, for me, it's like a lot of like internal, like talking to myself. Like I would get mad at myself sometimes. There's some days that I'm like, people say like, oh, nerves comes when you're not like unprepared for something. And I'm like, I am so freaking prepared. Why? Like, I literally talked to myself. I would be, like, all calm and whatever. And that's, like, the, the they call the person ahead of me first. And then I'm just there, and I just feel my heart go. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Why? I'm like, you and I just had this whole calm 15 minutes of just sitting there, and now you're going to give me anxiety? Really? Now my heart's about to come out of my chest? <laughs> you know? But it's, like, everyone struggles with it. It's just, like, I'm still working on, like, for acting per se like how do i not self-sabotage because that's what it is like nerves are just self-sabotage there i said it <laughs> no you're right absolutely especially because with within the acting industry i mean i can imagine whenever you're up next and then your heart just starts thumping and yeah. then you go one show and then it's like it's funny though because i've seen it work both both ways i've yeah. seen people kind of like kind of just fail yeah and then i've seen people that have just been able to like just shine with that and then the producers or whoever's yeah. running the show they look at that and they're like oh like that's genuine yeah and a lot of people i feel like try to put on a persona yeah it should just really be you you know you in this situation yeah. i've heard i've heard a mix of things oh yeah so that's what uh that's what I do, but um, yeah, no, there's work like literally. Well, I, I work too, you know. It's mm -hmm. still like it could be intimidating. Yeah. I do my show in English and Spanish, and Spanish has been very difficult because I am fluent. I learned both languages at the same time, but I speak more predominantly English. You know, I was born and raised in the United States, and like one of my co-hosts was just born in Mexico, so obviously, like for everything uh, to survive, he's had to speak Spanish. So it's a, the fluidity comes around uh, comes across a little differently. So. I, I've had to really, really work extra hard because there's times that I like, again, self-sabotage. You know, mm -hmm. I learn the words where I let nerves come in or self-doubt come in. And that's when, you know, I'll trip up on a word or something. It's like word vomit. It's like, well, uh, what did I just say? So, yeah. That's funny. Um, I definitely want to be respectful of your time, Janelle. So mm -hmm. what... You know, what are you, what are you working on right now? I know you mentioned, you know, the ESPN and everything. People can check you out. Yeah. But uh, what are some other things that you got going on? Yeah. Um, so 
recently we just had a screening for a web series that I did last year. Um, it's uh, 10 minutes, 10 episodes. Um, it's not available out to the public just yet, so make sure you follow me on Instagram at the Janelle Marie. Um, when I'm not doing ESPN, because that show it's called Now or Never on ESPN2, Ara Nunca on ESPN Deportes. It's Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. Pacific, so East Coasters, you have to DVR because it comes out at 2 a.m. Or it's available on the app. And then um, I shot that independent movie I talked about a little bit earlier. It's called Season of Love. That comes out November 21st. So that's something that you guys can keep your eyes out. And then, yeah, and then the other part-time job, I also contributed for Hacks News, which is cool because it's like I live stream with people across the world on like certain topic, like topics and stuff like that. So uh, this just this morning, I was um, live from Mexico City because – um, it's the fifth anniversary of the 43 um, students that were are missing and disappeared uh, in Mexico. I don't know if you remember that, but um, parents are still fighting for justice because they never got an answer. So, you know, I got to talk. There's a contributor from Mexico City that's there at the march and, like, showing us everything. So we get to have these conversations uh, internationally. And then I went live from uh, the parliament. Like, uh, there's a feed that we, like, kind of chat with and... But it's kind of a cool experience. It's like a, a newsroom for the digitally savvy. So people can kind of, yeah. you know, you can actually like talk to the hosts of a show right. and we can like voice our opinions too or share your opinion. So yeah, got a, got a lot going on. Yeah. Um, things that I want to focus on more, I really hope next year I can focus a little more on acting okay. because uh, that's like my, that's my passion. But at the same time, the door keeps opening on the hosting side, so I got to continue my destined journey as well. So, but also like J Lo, she does everything. Oprah does both. So these are people I aspire to be. Oprah's been in movies and has her own talk show, so maybe I can be the Latina yeah. Oprah. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. Now Oprah's oh, especially her story. It's yeah. it's intriguing to see where she comes from, but yeah. She but has yeah. another hard story too. That's someone. That's a woman that's been through many obstacles oh and still got to where she is today so don't forget that kids yeah especially in selma that was a yeah it was a heck of a movie but mm -hmm. i would attach everything uh you know janelle mentioned in the uh in the description so you guys can check her out uh -huh. and then uh janelle typically you know to end the show i always have the the guest give not just a, a tip of advice but okay. something they can uh, go out and execute on right so basically okay. an action step it could be a word it can be a sentence however you want to, to give it so what is one thing you know to the audience and the, and the viewers listening today that you would love for them to go out and, and execute um i would love for them and i hope no one said this already to make a list of their goals that they want to achieve in three months and be real. Do not write down that you want to make a million dollars in three months. Like <laughs> set up something. If you've been, if you're, you know, I don't know when this is going to come out, but if you started your new year's resolution list and you have not tackled it by now, please like, I want you right now to make a list of things that you want to accomplish by the end of 2019. I really believe in writing down your goals and having um, lists. I do a list every day to just tackle my daily goals and I have a week list too. Um, that will change your life because you will look at that post-it and it will mess with you because you'll be like, damn it, I told myself I was going to get to it. And I didn't. So I, I want you guys to set goals for something that you can tackle in the next three months before 2019 is over. And I will be watching you from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just set those goals and, and, and tackle them. The power of lists or even do a vision board. Superhug. If you guys can do a vision board, that'd be great. And tag us. Um, because I have one of those too. Do you have a division board? I do. Do you see? Oh, yeah. The people with the D, DJ Marie and Nate the Great, <laughs> uh, we have vision boards. So do lists and vision boards. It changes everything. Mm. Does, that, does that work? No, that's, that's perfect. Okay. To, to the list, can they do it on their phone or do they got to write it down? Write it down. Mm. Do you uh, do it on your phone? Uh, no, I do, I do it on the list. Yeah, yeah. see? There's something, God, before we let this go on too, too long, it's like, there's something, there's a, uh, there's science, there's science to it, but there's a, some, a connection between like, you know, your brain actually physically writing something down that changes it. Yeah. I know we're trying to be eco-friendly and saving the world with paper and stuff like that, 
but use the back of a receipt and, and write write it down. I have a planner. I Tuesday I still go to Target. I buy the same exact agenda planner like how they used to do in school. And that's how I organize myself. Mm. It's a real deal. So write it down on paper. Mm. Don't type it up. It's crucial. It doesn't matter if it's a, a $1 uh, agenda from Dollar General. Okay. Yeah, no, that's where I go. I just have to go to the Dollar Tree. Yeah. Or if I'm feeling bougie, I go to Target. <laughs> you know? But I go to Dollar Tree. No, for, I appreciate that. You know, thank you so much for, for being on the show and uh, just sharing your story. So, guys, check Janelle out. Again, I'll attach everything in the, in the description below. She's up to incredible things. And uh, stay tuned on the next episode. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.